breaking news, unique opinions. Hear it all on The Brian Kilmeade Show. It was clear at the time that the phones were likely to contain very important information. Indeed, Al Shamrani attempted to destroy both of the phones, even going so far as to disengage from the gunfight long enough to fire a bullet into one of the phones. Unfortunately, Apple would not help us unlock the phones. Unbelievable, unacceptable, I don't care about uh, privacy, it is Al-Qaeda. And that is what the AG said and Chris Ray, the FBI director, confirmed. Congressman Michael Waltz joins us, House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, what can we do about this? Apple kowtows to China, but they stiff-armed the FBI. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Brian. That since has taken the FBI, I, what, five months, six months? Uh, to crack into this phone, not knowing whether there were other ongoing plots. You know, we have over 20 military bases just in Florida alone. There's thousands of foreign students uh, uh, all over uh, the United States, foreign military students that are studying and training on our bases. And uh, who knows what could have been prevented or what was going on while Apple just flat out said, no, we're not going to help you. Uh, even though this was an active, ongoing terrorist operation uh, that we now know uh, was at least coordinated, if not in, inspired by uh, Al Qaeda. Do they feel burned by the Snowden revelations that showed they had they had cooperated in the past? Yeah, yeah. No, this is exactly what's going on. So, so what, what Apple will say is, well, if we create a backdoor that is that you know law enforcement can lawfully use, and I want to be very clear, this is in terrorism cases. Very different. We have to draw a line when it comes to anything to do with U.S. citizens. But an active, you know, after the shooting has happened, after the attack has happened, Apple's saying if we create a backdoor, then anybody can get in it. And that's just, I think that's just a weak excuse. What's really going on is after Snowden revealed that tech was working with, uh, with American agencies, whether it was to work against our adversaries or to stop terrorist plots, they had a huge blowback from, you know, the millennial types and others in Hollywood and others. And it was bad. You know, it was bad for their reputation in those circles. And so I think that's what's really uh, going on here. They can do this in a way and keep it uh, secure and keep it uh, in, in classified circles, um, just like what the FBI eventually was able to crack into the phone, but we don't know how they were able to do it or the tools that they were able to do it with. This can be done, Brian. This is about their reputation as they see it, yet they don't care about what they do with China, what they do with Russia, and they've been actively working with those authoritarian regimes. So they'll work with them, but they won't work with the United States government to take down terrorists. It's ridiculous. So, so wait a second. So and when it comes to China, they asked him to take down an app that allowed those Hong Kong protesters to communicate. Did they do it? Yeah, they did. Uh, not only did they do that, they were asked by China to move some of its data on its own citizens into places where the Chinese government, the Communist Party, could have access. So this is going after the Uyghurs, the Tibetans, uh, and, and uh, you know, other political targets, Christians and others. And they did the same thing with Russia as well, where they basically made sure that the data on its citizens were in Russia so that it could be, so that it could be accessed. You know, I mean, we're seeing this across big tech. Uh, Google has the same type of hypocrisy where they wouldn't work with the Pentagon on an artificial intelligence program called Maven, uh, but yet they would work with the Chinese on what it called its dragonfly search engine. Uh, eventually, under pressure, they stopped that as well. But, but this hypocrisy from big tech is just, uh, it's just jaw-dropping. Uh, there's, in, there's a lot of stuff going on now with China. What about their students coming back in the fall? we got to worry about infections and the virus. Shouldn't we use this as a way to just stop this and just tell China you can't come here because too many are using this to infiltrate our college, uh, our college system? Yeah, well, this, this uh, China task force that, we're, that we've developed now in the House uh, unfortunately, right now, it's just Republicans. The Democrats backed out after they had already agreed to participate. That's one of the things that, that uh, 
that we're going to be looking at the 400,000 Chinese students that were given visas to come here. Uh, many of them go into robotics and artificial intelligence, uh, uh, advanced materials and others. Uh, and, and they're good kids. I want to be clear, Brian, before anybody throws out, you know, accusations of racism or xenophobia, they're fine. Their government forces them to vacuum up technology. But the, the bigger piece in my mind are just as bad are the American professors under the Chinese Talents Program who take millions of dollars in DOD research money and then take that right over to Beijing being on their payroll as well. It's got to stop and the task force is going to stop. Michael, Michael Waltz, thanks so much for what you do. Appreciate it.